One of the reasons why I picked up and left New York, um, given all the mandates, but definitely as far as the um, level of support was not good for the parents, you know. I had three children at home, and one, one of them was a two-year-old at the time. So trying to be a teacher, a parent, and a full-time um, employee, uh, it was really rough, and my children suffered. Joining us now from Parents Defending Education, the Director of Outreach, Erica Sanzi. Erica, it's great to see you again. Erica, this story, nice to see you. Uh, it's good to see you. Okay, Obama's former top economic advisor, Jason Furman, he's now saying it was wrong, it is wrong to attack people who are against pandemic school shutdowns. He's calling this, quote, vicious abuse. What do you think of that? Well, it was vicious abuse. I mean, Anyone that was out there publicly calling for schools to open was subjected not only to vicious abuse, but character assassination. So it wasn't only, you know, Emily Oster who certainly went through this, but many of us who opined about this were accused of being white nationalists and racists and privileged people who just wanted their babysitters back. And so it was a really, really ugly experience and i think that that explains why so many people who knew that closing schools was wrong decided not to speak out because they saw what was happening to people who were sharing their opinions on this in public and erica you know the new york times now reports the school shutdowns during the pandemic wiped out the equivalent of two decades of learning for reading and math for school children children that black children had an even bigger collapse in scores it's decades of progress undone and you talk about emily oster you know she was at brown is at brown university she looked at the data and said the data doesn't support school shutdowns no we knew really early on that the data didn't support school shutdowns you know europe that had even when they had lockdowns in other parts of their society they kept schools open and we did the opposite we had bars and restaurants open and children still locked out of schools so it was inexcusable you know since that spring when we were uncertain about things there was really no excuse to keep schools closed and unfortunately to your point so many people knew that this was inevitable. They knew that there was no way you could lock children out, not only from the academic you know, learning experience of being in school, but from seeing their friends, from sitting at lunch with their pals, from the sports that they play and the other activities. They were essentially locked out, isolated. But let's not forget, even though we were told that the schools weren't safe enough for school, they then allowed the schools to serve as childcare centers that parents had to pay for if they had no, no one to supervise their children and they had to go to work. Wow, that's something too. So, you know, again, the school shutdowns did all of that, and the CDC and the teachers union were behind that. You know, the government divided yes. everyone into essential and non-essential workers, and suddenly teachers were deemed non-essential. You know what I mean? And as late as summer 2021, Randy Weingarten was refusing to commit to reopening schools, and she was demanding money from the Biden administration before she do that, to, before she reopen. And then she had led a divisive, politicized campaign to stop parental involvement in schools. So what was happening there? Well, first of all, she was strong arming people so that she could get what she wanted. And let's remember all of the things that the union leaders said that they needed in order to reopen safely. I believe that 93 percent of that money remains unspent. So kids are back in schools. We didn't use the money that she and others said we had to have to reopen. And um, yeah, and the reality is we have seen, I mean, this isn't even conjecture. We know, we have documents that show that the unions and the Biden administration and the CDC coordinated to keep schools closed. And let's keep in mind, not all places kept schools closed. Many sc states, and even where I live, I live in a, in a Democrat controlled state that kept schools open. So it was possible to do it, but unfortunately not many places did now, it. And now we are seeing, the, now, this was the inevitable fallout. We knew you got this millions was going to be children. Millions of children are now out of the public school system. They left, final word. Yeah, so in addition to plummeting enrollment numbers, we also have now plummeting proficiency in reading and math. And the children that were struggling the most are the ones who have collapsed the most over the past two years. And uh, we're going to have to, you know, really work very hard to 
get them back up to speed. This is this, this was preventable and this was caused by decisions made by people. This was not the pandemic that caused it. It was decisions made by people in positions of power. Great work. Erica Sanzi, great interview. Thanks for coming on. Have a good weekend.